As you might be able to see, there's a lot of mosquitoes buzzing around my head. We have these cool conditions right now. We've had a couple of days of cool weather combined with rain and therefore the mosquitoes are able to stay active all day long. So it's not so bad here. I thought it would be worse here at the cabin. This, remember this is the first bug season that I've had this cabin standing in this location. So I was curious to see how it was going to be. Rest of the forest and down by the road where I parked the vehicle, it's a little bit swampier and the mosquitoes seem to be bad down there all the time at this time of year, like all day long I mean. Here at the cabin, not so bad, but of course, uh, periodically and at morning and, and at dawn and dusk, they do get quite bad. So, so when you spend as much time outdoors as I do and you're basically living with the bugs and you have to have ways to combat them or they just drive you crazy, I just would not be able to do what I'm doing, especially at this time of year in the spring and, and early summer without having an effective bug control regimen. So I'm wearing this, uh, cheap bug uh, jacket it's a tight weave uh, mesh basically it holds a little bit of heat in because it is fairly tight mesh so it's not the most comfortable when it gets really hot that's what I don't like about wearing bug jackets but it is highly effective and it has a hood if I pull it over choke myself pull it over especially if I do leave a hat on uh, a peaked uh, ball cap is better but keeps the mesh off your face so the bugs can't bite through but this zips right up and uh, when that's closed it's 100 percent effective for bug control but like i said it's just too hot uh, for me i find so um, i need something more effective plus the other issue of course almost everywhere now in the uh, u.s and canada is uh, ticks black-legged ticks which carry lyme disease a bacteria that causes lyme disease and it's not here yet, the black-legged tick does not live in this area yet, but there is a fairly high deer population here considering it's um, as far north as I am here. But what's happening of course is that the ticks are moving north as the climate continues to warm. So we have just south of here, we've got some uh, cases of Lyme disease in the last year or two. So I expect eventually they'll, they'll end up here. So I am a little bit concerned about Cali and I'm concerned about myself and my family, especially my girls who when they go camping or hiking it's usually more to the south where there is more ticks. So a few years ago when I started becoming more concerned about Lyme disease I was researching methods to protect myself and protect my family and uh, it seems that permethrin um, so clothing seems to be the most effective and the reason for that is because permethrin actually kills bugs on contact so if they land on your clothing It'll actually kill them, it doesn't just deter them. So if a uh, tick is crawling on your pants or crawls on your your uh, boot or your shoe and up your sock and it gets on your skin and latches on, within 24 hours it starts transmitting uh, fluids back into your body and that's where they, where they become an issue, where they can cause infection. Uh, not just with Lyme disease, but other diseases as well. So if that same tick though is climbing up a permethrin soaked sock or pant leg or something, or even a shoe, then the tick will actually die. Um, I found out that it's actually effective for mosquitoes and black flies as well. So I started applying this stuff to my clothing three years ago. Problem is in Ontario, Canada, or I think all of Canada, you're not allowed to buy permethrin uh, for personal use or buy clothing that's soaked in permethrin for personal use. So that's unfortunate because in the U.S. there's a number of manufacturers who do that. They'll pre-soak the uh, clothing in permethrin because they're able to set it at high temperature. It lasts a lot longer than applying it the way I apply it. So I've had to order livestock grade permethrin which is at 10% at at dilution at 10% solution and you need it to be down to about 5% solution to be effective. So that means I need a 19 to 1 ratio, so 19 parts water to 1 part permethrin, this concentrated permethrin. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up right now and I'll um, soak my clothing in it and then I just need to hang it to dry. Uh, be w aware that this stuff is highly toxic in concentrated form, so you don't want to get it on your skin too much and you want to be careful about where you dispose of it and even where your clothing is dripping as it's drying. Um, so I'm going to be aware of that as I do it. Now the leftover stuff, a couple of things you can do is you can 
uh, let it evaporate, so leave the pail open, let it evaporate to the air, let all the water escape, then take the solids and dispose of them at a hazardous waste disposal area, or uh, what I prefer to do is just dilute it or put a lid on it and it's actually going to be good still the following year. That's what I typically do once I make up a batch. It's good for a while. Um, the other option is to put it into spray bottles or some other smaller um, container where you can disperse that in areas that you want to kill bugs. So for me around the base of the cabin inside on the where the wall joins the floor I'll put some around there just to deter the ants that seem to be getting in right now. Black ants. So if you want a little bit more information or you want to see the actual ratios depending on what the quantity that you're looking for how to mix that then go to the link here it takes you to the article on the website that i wrote two or three years ago and that'll help you uh, make mix up your own batch so i ordered mine from ebay because it's not available in canada and it wasn't available on amazon even if you want to uh, click on the link in the website you'll find uh, find a link to where i got this um, so that's what it is like i said it's 10 percent it's actually made for livestock, so I need to dilute this to 5% to be safe for humans. But once it's diluted, applied to clothing, and dries on there, it does not continue to leach into your skin. In fact, your clothing will be good for up to six washings or six weeks after you treat it. It'll continue to be effective on your clothing. Now, the real benefit to that is, the alternative is that you're applying bug repellent, and bug repellent, their most effective one, is DEET. Uh, directly to your skin which of course you do absorb into your skin so this on your clothing is much safer than putting insect repellent directly on your skin so that's why I use it otherwise I would never have chemicals in my regimen or in my you know, cabin especially but to me dealing with bugs effectively is not just for comfort it's for safety as well for health so first I have to go down to the water I need to do a video still on how I deal with my water here. I do have a, a hand pump down at the road where I park the truck, but uh, I haven't hooked it back up for the spring because in the winter it freezes. So I need to sh hook that up and show it to you. But in the meantime, I usually just get uh, water from either the puddles that accumulate here in the tree wells or down in the stream here. So let's go grab some water right now and then get this thing mixed up. Okay, so I brought five gallons of water up from the stream. This is a five gallon pail, which is 20 liters. I want to reduce that to, uh, what am I putting? I'm going to do pants, socks, hat, shirt, maybe two shirts. So I want, uh, I could probably get away with just five liters. If you have latex gloves, then put those on. I don't have any here. I have these uh, neoprene or latex impregnated cloth gloves. So I'll just have to be careful not to get it in its concentrated form on the back of my hands here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the whole thing in there. So I actually should be wearing glasses too. All right, just gonna pour this in. Gotta make sure she doesn't go anywhere near, near this other pail. So I'll, I'll put a lid on this as soon as I get the clothing soaked in it. So you notice the Water here has got a lot of tannin in it, which of course any stream or lake that uh, has leaves falling in it, branches and stuff like that, it's going to have a lot of tannin. So that's that brown color, that tea stain. You'd want to be careful if you were doing any white clothing up here, not to stain your clothing. But um, it's that tannin that's used for tanning hides. So when I make, uh, so when I tan a, a moose hide or a bear hide or a deer hide or a small game hide, I'll actually use uh, tannin water sometimes. 
just really concentrated and I found the most effective way to do that was with oak bark. So I so would take a big plastic garbage can, fill that with water and fill it with as many uh, uh, oak uh, bark pieces as possible. Let that sit. can't remember when the last time I did it, how long I let it sit, but you'll notice that the water gets really, really dark. And then you can take a hide that's been scraped down properly and soak it in that. So I'm not sure how good it is for you, but I run this water through the Berkey water filter inside for drinking and everything else. I just boil it to wash dishes and do stuff like that, but I'm not going to ingest it. It's not necessary. I drink uh, water straight from the lake or filtered uh, or boiled from the lake all the time on my outdoor trips. Good timing. The bugs are really bad right now. Rain's is stopping. It's starting to warm up a little bit. So they're going to get bad for a while. Then they'll disappear once the heat of the day starts. And let this soak for up to two hours. So at least an hour. I'll get a clothesline going here and then I'll pull it out and uh, let it drip dry. So stick it in the outhouse so that Callie can't get at it. Another thing about bugs is that they are attracted to dark colors. So you'll notice that I usually wear this type of thing during bug season. This is just a regular branded, uh, you know, outdoor brand fishing shirt, basically. So, you know, with all the venting in the back and a uh, collar that flips up, which I keep up a lot of the times on the back of my neck, uh, long sleeves that can be rolled up and tucked in to make it a short sleeve shirt. Uh, problem with that is when you're out in the water, you get burned on your, your forearms and your hands. So it's helpful to have a long shirt covering your full body, but that it's so light in material weight as well as color that it doesn't overheat. But really good test is to stand beside somebody. You wear this and somebody else wears a dark, especially black or dark blue garment. And you'll see all the bugs accumulating on them and, and avoiding you. They'll go straight to that black first. So hats included. So I always wear my lightest hat during bug season. This is my oldest Tilly probably and my lightest colored one. And not only is it light in color, but it's a lightweight breathable fabric with lots of venting so I don't overheat on the water. And when I do get overheated, I just scoop it in the water and put it on my head. This, I also soaked in permethrin 
So what'll happen if the bugs land on that, they'll either die or they'll quickly take off because they don't like the smell or the uh, taste of it. So very effective. Now, sometimes I'll also put a, a sort of a two-sided uh, sticky tape on the back of this hat. Deer flies and horse flies tend to circle and then they land on the back of your head because they know where your predator eyes are. And when they do that and they uh, land on that sticky tape, then they get stuck to it and you can remove them later instead of having them continue to search until they find some vulnerable skin somewhere. So light clothing is absolutely essential to uh, avoid bugs or to uh, lessen the impact of biting insects in the spring. So all these layers are now soaked with permethrin. So I've got my shirt, my hat, pants and socks. Um, so anything that lands on me will either be repelled or die. It doesn't act like a repellent in that it smells and that it turns them off and they don't land on you. But when they do land on you, they uh, immediately, I don't know what happens exactly, but they don't bite through because they are impacted by the permethrin before they get a chance to, to bite through my clothing. So I'm finding that they're effective with um, those stable flies or whatever they are that we seem to have around here now. We didn't have years ago. So it looks like a house fly, but it bites just like a deer fly. We have deer flies, horse flies, mosquitoes, um, no CMs are, I think, somewhat um, similar to, I guess, a midge from the UK. And uh, did I say mosquitoes and black flies? So predominantly the things I'm most concerned about are mosquitoes and black flies. So I find this quite an effective repellent or deterrent from um, to those bugs. So, so, so far this spring, it hasn't been all that bad. That last video, there was a couple of scenes that Kelly was covered in mosquitoes and I had a bunch of mosquitoes buzzing around me. I've had the smudge fires going, but overall, especially during the day, they haven't been that bad. Um, but over the last few days, we had that rain that you saw and now some warm sunny days. So the bugs are breeding like crazy in the route, even in the middle of the day right now. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, but things like this permethrin so clothing, the bug jacket, the smoky fire, um, uh, and DEET uh, based, DEET or citronella based bug repellents on my skin. But I guess I've built up a tolerance, uh, spending so much time outside, so they don't affect me as much. I don't really swell up or react to the bug bites. You know, the odd one I might, but typically I don't. Um, so therefore I'm not as panicked about them. And the panic is what raises your, your uh, perspiration and then your uh, carbon dioxide emission, which is what the bugs are attracted to. So it pays to stay calm, but I mean, that's just the reality of the life in the, in the woods. And I'd rather, like I said in other videos, deal with bugs because the environment is pristine and clean enough for the bugs to survive in, rather than the city or suburban environments where the water's polluted and there's not enough forest covered, so therefore the bugs can't survive. So that's the trade-off. So if you want more information on uh, permethrin and how to dilute it to the proper concentration, and where to get it, then refer back to the website. I'll provide the link up here and also in the description below. It'll take you to the website, the article I wrote two or three years ago that explains all of that for you. So as the summer progresses and the temperatures get warmer and the bush starts drying out and the little streams and everything start drying out, the insects stop breeding. So bugs get better and better as the season goes on. So really it's a month or two of, of dealing with this and then we're back to nice conditions. So anyway, I better get back to work here. Appreciate you following along. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, make sure you check in every Friday to watch me doing stuff here at the cabin. So have a great week. Take care. I'll see you up at the cabin next time.